Hello friends, I'm Dr. Farheen and let's do a rapid revision of prenatal genetic testing. So why are we doing it? Because we need to find out if the fetus has any genetic abnormality or not. How is it done? By taking the blood sample from the mother and also through ultrasound. So it is done trimester wise. Let's go through them one by one. So the first trimester testing is done between 11 to 13 plus 6 weeks. The blood test is known as a dual test. Here we are testing two things, A and B. A is your PAP A and B is your beta HCG. Coming to the ultrasound, the ultrasound is known as the level 1 scan or the dating scan. Again, it is done between 11 to 13 plus 6 weeks. Do not get confused with the viability scan which is used to check whether the fetus is viable or not which is done between 7 to 9 weeks. Now coming back to the dating scan, here we are testing for two things, presence of the nasal bone and presence of nuchal translucency. Okay. So presence or absent nasal bone or a hypoplastic nasal bone suggests that there is some abnormality with the fetus. Also with the nuchal translucency, what do we mean by that? So it is a collection of fluid behind the fetal skin. This is a normal fetus and we see that there is very minimal collection behind the nape of the neck. So this is the ultrasound and again over here we can appreciate minimal collection. But in this baby we can see that behind the nape of her neck there is a lot of collection. Just see the depth of the collection which is over here which can again be appreciated on this ultrasound. So what is the cutoff value for this nuchal translucency? The cutoff value is 3 millimeters. If the nuchal translucency or the nuchal thickness comes out to be more than 3 millimeters then we need to rule out the following conditions out of which trisomies are the most common and in that also trisomy 21 or down syndrome is the commonest of the other trisomies we also need to rule out turner syndrome and cardiac defects in the fetus so your blood test was your dual test and your ultrasound is your dating scan okay so the sensitivity of both of them independently is 70 percent but if we were to combine both the tests the dual and the nuchal translucency the, it is known as the combined test as the name suggests and the sensitivity to detect fetal abnormality becomes 80%. Uh, now coming to the second trimester, it is done between 15 to 20 weeks of period of gestation. The blood test is known as a triple test and the quadruple test. Okay, These are the two tests which we can done either of them. Okay, So in triple test, we are checking A, B and C. A is your alpha fetoprotein, B is your beta HCG and C is your unconjugated estuor. In dual test, what we were testing? Dual test, we were testing A and B. Over there, A stood for PAPE and B was your beta HCG, okay? Now, what is quadruple test? Quadruple test, in addition to your triple test, we are also checking for inhibin A, okay? So, all this A, B and C plus inhibin A. Remember very important point that it is not inhibin B, it is inhibin A and they have asked this multiple time in your questions to confuse you. All right. Now combined test was what? This was dual test plus nuclear translucency. What is integrated test? It is combined test plus quadruple testing. Okay. So it is first plus your second trimester testing. Over here also we can see that triple test detection rate for ab abnormality is 70% whereas in quadruple test it becomes 80%. So here we are looking for markers which will help us rule out aneuploidies. These markers are known as soft tissue markers. Okay. So patient is said to be at high risk and we need to evaluate her further if any of these two markers are present. So if these two markers are present, it does not mean that the patient is having a normless baby. It means that we need to further investigate her. Okay. So here the criteria is nuchal fold thickness more than 6 mm. Now what is the difference between nuchal translucency and nuchal fold thickness? So your nuchal translucency is your level 1 marker. Okay. And the cutoff for that is more than 3 mm. Okay. Your nuchal fold thickness is your level 2 marker and the cutoff for that is more than 6 mm. What is nuchal fold thickness? It is just the fold of skin behind the nape of the neck of the baby. Okay. Whereas the nuchal translucency is the collection of fluid behind the nape of the neck and it is measured in level 1. So presence of nuchal fold thickness more than 6 mm has the worst prognosis. Other factors are absent nasal bone, short femur, short humerus, simian crease, sandal gap, 
a ecogenic cardiac focus which means that there is some focus in the heart which is shining brighter than normal ecogenic bowel some focus in the bowel which is shining brighter than normal a pelvic ileal dilatation or a choroid plexus cyst okay so the highest risk is when the nuchal fold thickness is more than 6 mm okay followed by your ecogenic bowel then your short nasal bone and your ventricular megaly so if any of these four factors are present they are said to have the highest risk lowest risk is with the choroid plexus cyst your short femur and surprisingly the ecogenic intracardiac focus also has a lowest risk coming to single umbilical artery they've been asking many questions on this so normally an umbilical cord has two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein what is single umbilical artery associated with so it may be an isolated finding or it may be associated with any congenital anomaly okay so generally it is associated with diabetes epilepsy pregnancy induced hypertension any amniotic fluid disorder either poly or oligo congenital abnormalities and antepartum hemorrhage what you need to remember is that it is not associated with down syndrome all right this they have asked many times again in your exam now what is nipt nipt is your non invasive prenatal testing it is a screening test and it is not a diagnostic test what are the indications your indications are any abnormality with your first trimester or second trimester blood test or ultrasound okay any one of them or a prior pregnancy with autosomal trisomy or if the parents are known carriers of bizygot dislocation so what does it do it identifies the cell free dna fragments in the maternal serum which are derived mainly from the trophoblast and it is done from 9 to 10 weeks onwards so nipt has a very good detection rate for down syndrome up to 99% it is a non invasive test with 100% sensitivity and 99.9% specificity so it is a very good point about it that although being non invasive it has a very high sensitivity and specificity rate the only limitation is the cost that it is expensive so there is a small chart over here to summarize so whenever any screening test comes out to be abnormal whether your first trimester or second trimester test you can directly go for confirmatory test where what we are doing that we are taking sample of the fetus and sending it to the lab for examination but what is the major side effect in all of this that there is a risk of miscarriage so there is this nipt test the non invasive test although it's a screening test but it has a very high sensitivity and specificity so we can go ahead with that as it is non invasive so the risk of miscarriage is not there if it comes out to be negative then we can reassure the patient if it comes out to be positive we still need to diagnose the case and we have to do confirmatory testing okay now what are the confirmatory testings so confirmatory testing is either your karyotype testing or fish which is fluorescent in situ hybridization fish gives quicker results but karyotyping is the test which we do most commonly for sending a uh, tissue for the test we need to first take out the tissue okay so how are you going to procure the tissue tissue is obtained by chorionic villus sampling amniocentesis or chordocentesis let's discuss them one by one so on chorionic villus sampling as the name suggests the tissue is taken from the chorionic villi which is your trophoblast okay and how is it taken it is taken transcervically or transabdominally best time is between 11 to 13 weeks and it is not done before 10 weeks why because it can lead to limb defects or oromandibular defects in the children and this they have also asked as a question there's a high risk of miscarriage because it is being done earlier in the period of gestation and the risk is up to 1% coming to amniocentesis as the name suggests we are sampling the amniocytes and fibroblasts from the amniotic fluid so how it is done it is done through the abdomen where we put put the ultrasound probe then we put a needle under the guidance of ultrasound and we take out the amniotic fluid and send it to the laboratory so the best time is between 15 to 20 weeks and this is not done before 15 weeks because there can be high risk of miscarriage and the rate is up to 0.5% coming to chordocentesis it is taken after 20 weeks it is taken from the cord so it is the fetal blood sample 
and it is done abdominally there are few other charts which they have been recently asking in the questions or in your examinations a lot so we just need to pick up the important points in all of this so remember one mnemonic bad d is your down syndrome and down syndrome always your beta hcg and your inhibin a will be increased okay so down syndrome beta hcg and inhibin a are increased in trisomy 18 just remember that everything is low and in trisomy 13 alpha fetoprotein is increased also you can see that alpha fetoprotein is not increased in any other anomaly apart from trisomy 13 beta hcg and pap a was your dual test right so in dual test again we can see bad that beta hcg is increased in trisomy 21 and pap a continues to be low in all other anomalies now down syndrome cut off is 1 in 250 so what do we mean by this that out of 250 women one will have down syndrome okay now if the patient report says 1 in 350 is it a good report or a bad report so it means that out of 350 women one will have a down syndrome which means that there is a lesser chance right so it is a good report it's a low risk and if the report would have said 1 in 100 so then it means that out of 100 women one will have a down syndrome which means it's a bad prognosis and the patient is at high risk okay this is how you read it similarly for edward syndrome the cut off is 1 in 100 so this is the cut off for your blood test and if any of these cut off show come out to be high then you need to go for the confirmatory testing or you go for the nipt testing all right again this is a summary for the detection rate for all of the blood tests thank you so much